Hey, if you are looking to become a real estate agent, watch this video before you even get started with taking the classes and all the steps to move forward with that deal. So my name is Sonja Sabang and I've been a real estate agent for the past four years. I've seen the good times, I've seen the bad times, and I wanna share you my experience, especially if you are considering to become a real estate agent and tell you the things that I wish I knew before getting my license. Really big tips. I wanna paint that picture, let you kind of get an idea idea of what it's like, allow you to dip your toe into the water before you fully jump in. If you are looking to become a real estate agent, this is the only video you'll need to watch. So with that said, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Look, a lot of people become real estate agents kind of later on in their lives. Uh, they're currently not happy in their current jobs or they're going through like, I guess a midlife crisis and you know, maybe they've watched Million Dollar Listing New York or LA and they're seeing how much money and the lifestyles that real estate agents are actually making, right? And it's no secret that real estate agents potentially live lavish lifestyles. It's absolutely true. However, I want to be able to really give you kind of the insides and outs. I'm going to give you guys five points. These are five points that I really reflected on in my four years that I wish I could have gone back to past me past Hildjian and told him, hey, before you get your license, understand these five points before you get into the business. You know, kind of like five wishes that I wish I knew, right? Now, big caveat is like, even if I knew this before getting my license, I still would have moved forward to getting my license. I will say though that I would have been very much more well prepared, you know, making less mistakes if I had knew this before getting my license. So my knowledge, my experience on to you, my friend. Point number one. It is nothing like the TV shows. So the reason why I got into real estate is because I was a big fan of Million Dollar Listing New York. You know, I, I loved it. I saw exactly all the money they're making. I saw, you know, the negotiations and I felt like it was just something that I connected to. It was something that drew me in. And when I got into the business, it really wasn't anything like what they portray in the TV shows. So obviously the TV shows, they're not giving you like all the nitty gritty, every, you know, the ins and outs, they're kind of giving you the drama, right? Good t television, they want to increase their ratings. But obviously like, you know, for whatever reason, I didn't connect the two. I figured, oh man, I'm going to do exactly what, what they do, right? I'm going to get into the negotiation room. I'm going to negotiate down. I'm going to offer low and then make sure that they accept that offer. It's nothing, nothing, nothing like that. As a matter of fact, Truthfully, your day in and day out of being a real estate agent is very boring. It's very, very monotonous and it requires a lot of self-discipline in order to actually find success within the business. Uh, one of my mentors, uh, my coach actually, Brandon Mulrinen, very, very, very huge YouTube guy, very, very famous real estate coach. He had actually went into he followed one of the top agents out outside of his state in the United States and he he wanted to kind of see if they're so what's the secret? Right. He was, what is the secret to finding success? What is the secret that this person is doing that no one else is doing? And to his surprise, there was no secret, right? In essence, is exactly what we're saying that the, the day was very normal. It was very, very planned out. It was very, very just kind of like Groundhog Day, day in and day out, Monday through Friday. And it's, I think that's the tough part about being a real estate agent, staying in the business is because you have to be okay. You know, you kind of have to find peace in the kind of journey, you know, find peace in doing all of the minute things day in and day out without seeing quick results as well. And that is, for me, it was a tough part because, you know, I wanted, obviously I wanted to get in the game. I wanted to play, play in the game, right? I wanted to shoot baskets, right? I wanted to score the touchdown. I wanted to land the deal, but I didn't know getting into the business that there was a lot of work required until I was able to land that big deal. And if I had knew, known that, maybe it would have scared me off. It's like, maybe it's like, I don't see myself doing this boring stuff Monday through Friday, day in and day out, only to see results 90 days down the line, right? That tough pill to swallow when you think about it, especially when you need money, right? If you're getting into the business, needing quick cash and you're brand new into sales, it's very, very unlikely to happen. So I think that's my, uh, that's definitely my first point is it's nothing like the TV shows. It's yes, it has its exciting moments. Yes, it has its moments when, you know, you're finally in the game and, you know, you're negotiating your deals down. You do get those moments, but you don't get them every single day, Monday through Friday, right? And it takes a lot of discipline to be able to put yourself in that position to achieve that kind of glory, if you will. 
So that's my point. Number one is nothing like the TV shows. Very boring, uh, day in and day out, monotonous. So just know that and uh, find peace in it. Point number two. Now, this is, I do want to premise, I got all my information watching the TV shows, right? And Million Dollar Listing New York or any of those cities, you see exactly what each commission received whenever they close a deal. Right. And the thing is, I didn't know that we do not get the full commission. I didn't also, I also didn't know that in different cities within different states, the commission, the standard commission rate is totally different. Right. In New York, for example, standard commission is going to be 3% on the selling side and or the buyer side. Here in Riverside County, the standard commission is 2% typically for the selling side and the buying side. So 4% total. In the Bay Area was 2.5%, 2.5 for the seller, 2.5 for the buyer. Now, that's awesome, right? I mean, still to 3% of a million dollar listing is still going to give you about 20K, right? On the low end. But I did not realize that you always, you also have to split that commission to your broker, right? So you don't get the full 20,000. You know, you get a percentage of that 20,000 to keep for your own pocket and you have to pay some to your broker, right? And big caveat, this is only, this is when you start, right? When you're a salesperson, for four years, you have to actually practice as a salesperson in real estate before you could actually keep the full commission. And you know, you're basically a broker and you keep your full commission. But yeah, I wasn't aware of that. And then when you're working with these large numbers, you know, 0.5, right? 2.5 to 2%, that 0.5% difference makes a big, that's a lot of money. That's like 5,000 bucks basically. So it's one of those things that, you know, you don't know un until you get into the job. I didn't even bother answering the, uh, or asking the question because, you know, that's just the kind of person I was. I jump into things and, uh, you know, figure out as I go. But, you know, for all you guys getting into the business, understand that you do not see that full commission that you receive. Now, another thing too, guys, is there's also, it, it does take a lot of money to hold on to your actual license right? There are fees involved. You have to have a desk. There's a desk fee within your brokerage anywhere from, you know, $50 up to the highest I paid was $350 a month of desk fees. And that basically allows you to go into the office, print paper, you know, use the office, have a key fob, all that sort of thing. You basically, it's a, essentially a way to allow you to rent an office, right? And that's a fee that you have to pay every month. $350 was the highest that I had to pay. Um, you also have MLS fees. You also have association fees, uh, super key fees. All these things will add. And I had no idea getting into the business that there are all these little fees that I was responsible for in, in order just to hold my license, right? And again, that makes it even more difficult if you're getting into the business, no other income stream coming in, right? You're going cold turkey, getting in, and you're going, kind of going all in as a real estate agent. So understand that, especially for all those getting going all in, and this is going to be kind of your only thing. There are monthly dues that you're going to have to be responsible for in order to actually practice. So that was point number two. All right, point number three. It's market dependent. And if the economy is not doing well, then the real estate market isn't doing well, right? And vice versa. If the economy is doing well, mortgage rates are low, then real estate is going to be booming. It's going to be on fire. And, you know, that was something that, I mean, obviously I knew, but it's different when you're actually in the trenches, like actually in the game of building a real estate business. And what do I mean by that? You know, I started when the market was on fire. Rates were super low. Everybody was buying real estate, you know, selling real estate, moving from California out to like Arizona, Texas, Florida, kind of all these uh, cheaper areas. And it was great, <laughs> right? But my whole point is of, you know, the real estate being market dependent is it doesn't last. The economy is always going to go through its ups and down waves. So you have to understand that when it does go through its good times, you have to take advantage of those good times and understand how to you know, save your money the right way, reinvest into your business the right way, and, and basically put money away for when the market does come down to a tough time like how it is nowadays. Now, big caveat too is I'm not saying that you cannot do well in a bad market, right? Your mindset is going to dictate how well you're going to do, and that's the bottom line. However, take it this way. If you're in a pond where there's barely any fish and you're in a, another pond where there's like three, four, five times as many fish in that pond, which pond do you, will you be able to find more success in? Which, which 
ponds give you the better chance of finding more success as right? the place where there's going to be more fish. And it's just like the same thing with the real estate market. It's market dependent. You're going to do better based upon how the market is going and you're not going to do as well based upon how the market is going. And this is kind of a big point, especially if you're coming from a job where, you know, it's a nine to five and you're getting a steady paycheck every single month and you're used to that. You do not have to worry about, you know, where's my next paycheck coming from, right? So that was a big thing is understanding how to be financially responsible, understand how to, you know, save your money the correct way, understand that that check again to point number two is all that money's not going to you. You know, you're splitting that with your broker, you're saving money for all of your MLS fee for all your, your fees. And in addition, you're also saving money for taxes, which is a huge thing that, you know, coming from a nine to five job is something that you never, ever had to think about. Right. So market dependency is a huge thing. And it was a big thing for me because obviously I went from that low rate where everyone was doing well to the point where rates tripled within the, you know, two, three years. And, you know, the things that I did back when the, when the market was hot, the same exact marketing, the same exact techniques, the same exact selling I did is not working in today's market. So you have to understand that you always have to be learning and you always have to be kind of growing into the business. So market dependency is a huge, huge, huge thing to be prepared for before you get your real estate license. Point number four is the fact that your job is, your, your title is a real estate agent, but your job day in and day out is to be a prospector or a lead generator. And it goes back to the 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle, where 20% of what you're going to do is going to give you 80% of the results, right? In anything. And then specifically in real estate, that 20% that you should be doing every single day is prospecting, right? Lead generating. And that was something that I had not known until I actually you know, hired a coach. And I understood that if you want business, you have to generate business, right? And if you, if you want to stay broke, then don't even think about generating business, right? Prospecting, lead generating. It goes back to the point number one, where every day, day in and day out is very boring because basically you're prospecting Monday through Friday for, you know, two, three, four hours a day. And prospecting, there's so many different forms of prospecting, right? There's direct outbound prospecting where you're doing cold calls, you're door knocking, things of that nature. There's indirect outbound prospecting where you're doing like sending out mailers to a neighborhood, hoping that someone is going to respond to the mailers looking to actually want to, you know, sell or buy a home. And there's also online marketing, online prospecting where you have Facebook ads, Google pay-per-click. There's so many different ways to prospect. You basically should be doing everything, right? A little bit of everything is what my advice would be to anyone getting into the business, especially when times are tough. You can't put all your eggs into one basket. You kind of have to spread a wide net and see whatever comes in from that wide net. And prospecting is tough, especially for, again, if, if you're coming into the business without a sales background, then prospecting is going to be a tough pill to swallow because it's very uncomfortable. All the big coaches are going to recommend that you do outbound direct prospecting, which is cold calling. That's kind of like a very old school approach to prospecting, but I'm telling you right now, it's the approach, it's the skill set that every single top agent still does to this day, right? And it works. And the main reason why it works is because at the end of the day, real estate is a business. It's business about relationships. And when you're out prospecting, you are going out there, creating opportunity, creating relationships, building relationships that will allow you to be in the basketball game to, to you know, be in the championship game and playing, right? Which is essentially allowing you to get your home sold or their home sold and then or helping them find a home to buy. Prospecting is going to be something that you're going to have to understand, you're going to have to do and you have to get comfortable with. If you're not going to if you do not want to have anything to do with prospecting, do not get your license because otherwise you're just going to be saving money and you're not going to be closing any sort of deals. So, prospecting something that you will have to just accept being in this business. Remember that guys. All right. So point number five, final point guys, and it's to join a team. I've told this story so many times. Um, I have another video of why real estate agents fail in my channel. Definitely take that video out because I kind of dive deep into the whole idea of joining a team based off my own experience and how I found success when I joined a team. The, the final six months of being a real estate agent in my first year, I honestly wish I joined a team right when I started. When you join a team, it just makes everything so much easier, guys. You know, you learn 
you leverage people's knowledge, you, you leverage people's network, and you're just you're able to operate the business more confidently because you have people behind you. You have someone that you can go to to be able to understand and learn and so forth. Joining the team obviously absolutely is the biggest, biggest, biggest game changer for anyone just getting brand new into the business. Why though? Well, all the things I said, you leverage people's knowledge, you, you, you leverage people's support, so far and so forth. But when you join a team, teams are built because they're flush with leads. They have a lot of business typically. So when you join a team, what does that automatically give you access to? leads right so and then what do leads give you access to buddy and the best way to be good at real estate is to be in the trenches is to be in the action in the fold right things at this point it's not theory anymore it's not things that you're watching on tv or things that you're reading on a book you're actually experiencing it first had right being in the negotiations being in inspections understanding the psychology of buyers the psychology of sellers all these little skill sets that you learn is only available to you when you're actually in the game, right? And when you join a team, this gives you the faster access to being in the game. So join a team, <laughs> join a team. It'll cut your learning curve in half and it'll actually give you, it'll allow you to close a deal so much faster versus if you're just brand new, just trying to figure it out all on your own. All right, so those are my five points that I think you should know before getting your license. These are the five points that I wish I had told myself before getting into the business. And I really hope that, you know, you find value and you take these points, you know, just kind of like self-reflect upon it before getting into the business. And I'll say, if any of these points, if they don't deter you from getting into the business, then by all means, this is the career for you. I think that's a, a kind of a good way to just summarize everything. Anyways, guys, this is Hildren Sabangin. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for spending your time with me. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me a direct message. I'd be happy to be a resource for you. But yeah, uh, if you did like this video um, and to help you, I would really appreciate a like. I'll be coming out with more videos like this uh, in the future. And yeah, until the next video, guys, I'll see you then. Deuces.